Hi there. Today we are going to measure standby power on a cell phone charger. Uh, so, you know, standby power is normally known as say leakage power, uh, no load power, sleep power, or even vampire power, right? We'll be using our PA3000 power analyzer with PowerView software to make this measurement. Let's quickly look at the setup. We're using this breakout box to make the connections on the input side easier. The breakout box with its switchable terminals will help us make accurate low power measurements. Measuring low power is very different than measuring power at full load as the current is quite low and highly distorted. We also need to be very careful with power loss across the measurement channels as that can induce a significant error in final results. Now, if you look at the circuit diagram on the left, you can see that the voltage drop across the voltmeter channel that is an impedance of 1 mega ohms can add an error of about 53 milliwatts at 230 volts. That is a significant error when you're trying to measure power in milliwatt range. So to minimize this error, we will use the wiring on the right side where the current shunt is connected on the load side and measure current only through the load. Okay. Breakout box makes this easy by providing a separate terminal to switch from the VLO from the load side to the source side as seen in this picture. Okay, so we are set up correctly for making standby power measurements. Let's go to PowerView software. On the software now to measure standby power as per IC6231 standard, um, here on the setup page, we'll select test radio button, which will activate all compliance tests in the list. Okay, let's select IC6231 and click on wizard. The wizard will help us with proper setup. I'm expecting my standby current to be really low, probably below 100 milliamps or so, right? So let's enter 100 milliamps here. Based on my current amplitude, the software is suggesting we use a one amp shunt on PA3000 power analyzer. It also is showing me the proper connections on breakout box as we discussed earlier. Hit finish and let's go to the test page. Here on the top, we can enter all the tests in lab details um, we can also fill in the test info if desired. Uh, I'm going to leave it as alone, you know, just as is for now. Uh, on the left panel, let's enter the standby power limit as stated in the standards, right? So I'm going to input 30 milliwatts, which is normally a requirement for most of the cell phone chargers at, you know, such low wattage levels. Uh, I'll select 60 hertz and 120 volts as I'm in United States. Uh, this will differ based on your region. So, you know, just check your standard for that. The default time for this test is 15 minutes, but we'll use one minute for this presentation. That's it. We'll hit the start button and let the measurements run. The software will acquire power readings and plot them across time for the stated time period. It will also calculate power stability, voltage quality, and uncertainty as required by the standard and you can see on the bottom here. We'll let the test run for its length and skip to the end. Okay, there it is. The test has concluded and we failed. Uh, we can go to the result page to analyze our results and check what went wrong. Uh, here you can see which parameters failed and which passed uh, from this column right here. To further analyze the results, we can click on power readings tab here to track back and test by scrolling through the test. To generate a report, of our findings, uh, we can click on the PDF button right here. Right? This will give us a nicely formatted report per IC6231 standard, as you can see right here. Okay? The report will summarize all important parameters, the power graph and the test status. Alternatively, we can also export the raw data for test by using the CSV button. That's it for today. So um, if you have any more questions about standby power or anything you saw today, right? Uh, please go to tech.com and you can get more information from there. Uh, I'm Sishang Malak. Thanks for watching.